you, Charles. I told you it would work. Sheer luck. Sheer, unadulterated luck. The orphits, the grounds, the huge oak tree we passed, and the sash windows. Edward, if you'd been to as many stately homes as I had, you'd realize that 99% of them had large oaks and sash windows. You see? Even the light switch is at the right place. Seems a perfectly normal place to be. Where do you expect it to be? On the ceiling? A whole wall full of first editions. But surely you don't expect a place like this to be bothered with second editions. And looking out of the gloom, small eyes glistening like digression beads, was the huge and commanding visage of a rhino. Edward, my son, I have turned my back on beasts twice that size. You know, you can't bear to admit you're wrong. Just for once, once, try and acknowledge a fact. Fiction, dear boy, Mark Kane is fiction. All right, all right. We'll see, shall we? Now, <laughs> one of these days you'll have us charging down rabbit holes to have tea with the Mad Hatter. But really, just because an author prides himself on researching his novels. Wow. Extraordinary. But surely, Edward, you don't believe that the author actually described how to commit a robbery? I do. I mean, look at it. The lady can purr. It's absolute rubbish. Charles, I think you've made enough insulting remarks for one evening. Mm, do forgive me, dear boy, but if you could open that safe with that book... Read that paragraph. It was an old green safe, fashioned by Maldon Webb a good 30 years before. The model had one defect. The metal used to cast the tumblers was softer than the hard brass lock. They wore. As the years passed, they wore so smooth that one quick tap on the center of the combination dial dropped them all into place. Eureka! Edward, my boy, you shall have champagne for breakfast. More than that, Charles. Look, Jason King has written at least 26 Mark Cain adventures. And at least 20 of them contain robberies. 20? We haven't done a successful job for two years. Until tonight. And it was as easy as ABC. get a taxi. I do hope you won't be late. Huh. Perish the thought. 
Are you quite sure to go to the British Shaw Hotel? Charles, am I ever wrong? King will occupy his usual suite, go to his favorite restaurant, meet his favorite girl, and by midnight, our room burns near her fiddles. Hmm? <laughs> What time is it, dear boy? Mm. 11.30. <clears throat> I look rather sinister in this outfit, don't you think? Positively menacing. What are you going to do with these explosives? Well, I thought you were going to carry them. My dear Evan, you know perfectly well that I loathe the wretched stuff. I'm absolutely terrified it's going to go off. I mean, it makes such a dreadful noise. Oh, well, there's no chance of it exploding. Besides, even if it did, you wouldn't hear anything. Oh, charming. Here am I fortifying myself to tackle the most important job of our career, and you've wiped me out before I've even climbed through the window. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that, Charles, but we are using the very latest thing. High-powered plastic explosive. Absolutely safe. Good, then you carry it. And why do you have to dress for every occasion? I never shall know. Mark Kane always does. In every novel. Mark Kane is on the side of the law, dear boy. We're the villains. The least you can do is try to look villainous. You just said I did. Anyway, one doesn't usually go on a diamond robbery looking an absolute rag. Don't worry, I'll carry the explosives. Uh, thank you, Ed. Edward Matheson speaking. Oh, Carl. Absolutely splendid. Uh, thank you, Carl. Uh, the usual charges? Good. We'll pop them in the post in the morning. Bye. That was Carl. So I gather. King is in his favorite suite with his favorite girl and has just ordered his favorite champagne. A 1961 Meuse Chandon. Or 65. Or 65. Right. Shall we uh, go through it just once more? As you wish, Timboy. <clears throat> the offices of Rheindor and Heindelman, diamond merchants, were located in a small, grimy building in the heart of Munich's business district. A warehouse bulging with bales of long-forgotten wool dominated one side of the dark and dingy street. Facing it, like some gaunt relic from the past, was a three-story block of offices. Von Moldrick and his companion entered through the warped and weakened second-story window. Somehow the building had survived two wars and three depressions, but was now so old that the weathered timbers groaned beneath the weight of crumbling brick. Moving silently, they made their way to the office of the diamond merchants. <laughs> Forcing the frosted glass door was a ridiculously simple matter for a man of Von Moldrick's talents. I thought we were doing it according to the book, dear boy. It was an accident, Charles. An accident? Hmm. I think Jason King might describe it more vividly. Now that the safe should be by the bookcase on the right. Well, it isn't. It's by the desk on the left. King is slipping. Don't be so tiresome, Charles. Could have been moved there after he wrote his novel. Yes, and it could be a new safe. Well, it isn't. across the lock. Then, with gentle skill, two bars to the tumbler mechanism. And finally, a single detonator positioned with care. And the Moldic is ready for his master stroke.
I love this thing in touch. Let me make a sound. He's a genius, Charles. Jason King is a genius. And one of these days he'll be recognized for what he is. Yes. A master crook. Ready? Shall we? After you, old man. No, no. After you, dear boy. <clears throat> Punctual sort of chap. Thank you. He hates to be kept waiting. Really? Jason King? Yes? You are leaving us so soon? Yes, I'm afraid so. I'm going on to Geneva. See my mother. Your mother? Yes. Yes. Did you perhaps read about the robbery we had here last night? Uh, no. It had remarkable similarities to the one you mentioned in your novel. Really? Shadow of an Iron Man. How oh, very interesting. Now, I'm afraid it wasn't common burglary I committed last night. Now, if you don't mind... Oh, but I do mind, Mr. King. We would like to ask you some questions about your movements last night. Do you mean now? But I'm on that plane. Not that one, Mr. King. A later one, perhaps... This way, please. Now, wait a minute. My mother's expecting me at the airport. This is ridiculous. I like the bit about it not committing common burglary last night. Yes, I'd give anything to hear his answers. Mm, so would I, but we mustn't miss our flight. Not with this we're carrying, dear boy. What? <laughs> and the look on his face. But I'm on that plane, he said. <coughs> they can't hold him. They haven't got enough evidence. Not yet. Time he planted some. Hardly sporting, old man. We owe a lot to Jason King. Yes, rather too much. The sooner he's behind bars, the sooner we will be able to enjoy a long and luxurious retirement. Oh, I don't mind pointing a finger his way, but nailing him to the wall is hardly Mark Kane's cup of tea. My dear Edward, I keep telling you, Mark Kane is the hero, we are the villains. And villains do terribly villainous things. <laughs> King departed Munich 1312. That's an hour ago. Carl's getting a bit slack, isn't he? Where would he have had to drive back from the airport? Nevertheless, remind me to send him a rocket. Where's King gone to? Geneva, I imagine. No. No. Vienna, apparently. Vienna. Our man in Vienna. Right on the ball. King has ETA Vienna, 15.30 hours, Hotel Sacher will observe. There you are, first class chap. I really must remember to tear Karl off that strip. Vienna, Vienna. There's rather a special story set in Vienna. Oh, my dear Edward, we've only just stopped charging about all over Munich. Well, I mean, one must have some relaxation. But it is special. People at glass houses shouldn't, index finger left hand. That's it. The Red Danube. I remember there's a factory in Vienna where they do nothing but turn out solid platinum medallions. Don't like medallions. Charles, it's the blocks of the stuff we want before they melt it down. Easy to get rid of and a lot more valuable than gold. With a few of those under the bed, old boy, we could have that yacht you've been drooling about. I hardly ever drool. But you're right. It is interesting. If we could pop a block or two underneath Jason King's bed before he left, Charles, you have no sense of gratitude at all. No, none at all. More champagne, dear boy. Huh? Oh. Thanks, old man. <coughs> <laughs> well, well, well. There he is. Seems to have a constitution of a bull. Envy, Charles? This an observation, dear boy. I think we can safely assume that tonight is the night.
the night watcher will be here in two minutes. Don't be so certain, dear boy. We have to wait for hours. Mark Kane didn't. Edward, how many times do I have to tell you that we're the villains? Yes, but you haven't read this book, have you? Mark Kane does the robbery to stop them from getting the platinum. Yes, the plot escaped me from. Come on, come on. Quick. But you know, it doesn't seem possible. More than a million in platinum just lying there. Waiting for some ingenious operator to come along and... We're not in yet, dear boy. We will be. They may have changed the system. The night watchman locked away the platinum at night and brought it back in the morning. Page 97, chapter 8. Possibly. Definitely. And if he's locked it away, he's carrying the key. He's here. still in there. Then we've got time. Yes, but what if the girl's already left? My dear boy, I hardly think a man of Jason King's savoir faire would let a lady go home alone. True, very true, Charles, but if he's gone with her, how are we going to... Will you please stop twitching? One assumes that King has wined and dined rather well, and in such a condition he'd be no match for a Mark II version of Mark K. Now, will you drive on? You got us into this mess. Trying to extricate you, dear boy. Now hurry. We haven't got much more time. Edward! The six! That's King's floor! Suppose he sees us. Don't be ridiculous. As soon as he steps out. Charles, I, I don't think it's right. Would you rather he hit you? Disgusting. Positively disgusting. Honey, I'm going to be here for a whole week. Now, come on, I'm going to take you home. Come on. Defeat your food. You're a fascinating man, Mr. King. The world is your oyster. The most beautiful women, your companions, the finest food, your table, 
Even your clothes, sir, have become legend. One tries in one's own simple way to lead a reasonably civilized life. And yet, inevitably, the palate becomes jaded. Eh? Too much of anything, no matter how superb, creates bottom. Really? I hadn't noticed. I suppose it's true. There was a time when I found all policemen wonderful. And, of course, we're not. In fact, speaking confidentially, uh, I don't mind admitting that in certain situations we can be coarse and even brutal. I'm told nobody's perfect. Precisely. We all make mistakes, Mr. King. Let us take this statement of yours, for example. You have dinner in your room with a Miss... Uh, Arlene. Bernheim. You were last seen together at 9.30, and yet you claim that she didn't leave until uh, 3 a.m.? We're old friends. We had a lot to talk about. Naturally. Isn't it a rather odd coincidence that no one saw you leave? Not at 3 o'clock in the morning. We took the elevator straight to the underground garage. Mm. So you told me. Inspector, uh, um... Poran. I wish you'd come to the point. Chief Inspector Poran. Fancy. And I shall be blunt. A robbery has been carried out. A security guard was killed. A large quantity of platinum was found in your car. And remarkable as it may seem, the robbery was almost identical to one described in this novel. Oh, yes. And superbly written, too. Have you read it? If you had, you'd find that Mark Kane merely rendered the security man unconscious, Inspector. I beg your pardon. Chief Inspector. But then one must allow an author a certain dramatic license. I didn't leave the hotel until 3 a.m. Prove it. My only witness has been kidnapped, presumably because she was a witness. Has it occurred to you that if someone did try and copy the robbery I described, if anything went wrong, they would blame me? It isn't the first time, Mr. King. There's a report from Munich, the same thing. Beirut, Amsterdam, Rome, the list is endless. And somehow you always seem to be there. Of course I am. That's what they want. Precisely. I told you what happened. Now, instead of making the facts fit me, why don't you get off your well-upholstered posterior and find out who is responsible? You are our number one suspect. Indeed, our only suspect. With what possible motive? Adventure, excitement. Oh, really? And the financial gain. You are a man bored with life. Seeking new pleasures, new sensations. A man who lives by the pen and has a yearning for the sword. I've never heard such unadulterated poppycock. Life isn't something you invent. Life is something you live. And if you're bored, you die. Every street I walk down, every person I meet, is new and real and vital to me. Even you, blithering nincompoop that you are. Perhaps we could come to an arrangement. Where do you think the girl is now? Whoever waylaid her has held her prisoner. She's probably out of the country. Then you'd better go and find her, Mr. King. Hadn't you? Champagne? I only drink with friends. Until you're thirsty. What? <laughs> if you two had any sense, you would leave me here and make a run for it. My dear, you shouldn't be misled by appearances. Our manners may be impeccable, we may have all the trappings of gentility, but as I keep reminding Edward, we are villains. If King finds his way here, it seems extremely improbable, I shall kill him. And if you attempt to escape, I shall kill you. Allow me. It is from someone called Walter in Vienna. Apparently, Jason King took the noon flight to Paris. What do you think about your plan to frame him for murder now? The Vienna police have released him. And the evidence was rather circumstantial. And he's flying to France. Charles, do you think he knows something? I doubt it. The King lives in Paris, doesn't he? Oh, that's correct. But Paris is not very far away, remember. And um, he has got influential friends. The King has no way of knowing that we're in Nice. There's not even the slightest possibility of him finding us. Then, uh, why are you worried? I am not worried. Don't push me, my dear. You seem to forget that you are the only way that he can connect us with Vienna. And your disappearance might become permanent. What are you going to do? Nothing. But he can't find us. Don't you be too sure. Mark Kane can do most things. Where are you going? To make some arrangements. 
If King does show his face in Nice, we'll know about it. But you just said that wasn't possible. It isn't. I'm just taking precautions. Precautions, that's all. <laughs> Watch her. But, uh, Charles, I don't think there's any need to, um... Watch her. Charles, uh, look here, man. Uh, Charles, uh, uh, Charles, you can't leave me with them. <coughs> Charles! I really must apologise for Charles. He's been under the most awful strain since the, uh... Yes. It was an accident, you know. It wasn't even our gun. I did not mean to upset him. He's awfully nice, really. <laughs> Underneath it all. Uh, look here, why don't you relax and have a drink? It's absolutely superb. It's the 61. Yeah, it's Jason's favourite vintage. Oh, when he can't get the 65. You seem to know a great deal about Jason King. Yeah, I should do. We have known each other for years. What? In fact, um, he used me in one of his novels. Really? Yeah, perhaps you've read it. From China, yours sincerely. Of course. That's one of my favourites. You say he actually modelled one of his characters on you? Yeah. I was uh, Selena Clare. The girl in the escort agency. That's correct. <laughs> How fantastic. But she was an expert on judo. Do you know that she actually threw Mark Kane through a win... No. Uh-huh. She did. Didn't she? Now, wait a minute. You wouldn't. You... You couldn't. You... You can't. Oh, but I can, Edward. Get away. Oh, Charles, I, I didn't let her get away. She was Selina Clare. Oh. Ah, ah, oh. There are times, dear oh. boy, when you bring out the worst in me. Oh, oh, oh. She'd have done the same to you, probably more. You are pathetic. An unarmed slip of a girl. You ought to read from China, yours sincerely, and then start talking. You had a gun, two fists. And 50 pounds advantage. All you had to do was watch her for an hour or so. Watch her? I did watch her. Nearly kill me. Oh, what are we going to do now? She'll go straight to King, of course. That means we have to leave here, leave France. The question is, where to? What about the Far East? Or, or South America? You know I hate hot climates. No, the thing to do is to find King before he finds us. Charles, I, I know things have been a bit difficult lately, but the last person we want to find is King. That was before your pathetic efforts. Thanks to you, dear boy, we're now in the unenviable position of being hunted. No, there's only one thing we can do. What's that? Kill Jason King. Charles, I don't know what's come over you the last couple of days. I really don't. You've turned into a positive Al Capone. Through your stupidity, all through your stupidity. Well, there must be another way. There isn't. We're not playing charades anymore. King won't rest until he's proved that we killed that security guard. And only he can prove it. Don't you realize that? With King dead, no one will ever find us. Well, still a girl? She can prove nothing, not without King. According to his schedule, he should be in Venice next week. When he doesn't find us here, he'll probably go there. And it's just a matter of following him, see where he goes, what he does. Do you know, Edward... If I had to choose the ideal city to kill a man, I think I would choose Venice. I wonder what he's up to. He's making notes. Doing research, I'd say. Possibly, possibly, dear boy. 
Has King ever set a novel in Venice? Not yet, no. And he's probably using this area for his next story. Tomorrow morning we'll be ready for him. Here? It's a bit, um, public, Charles. Not if we're in one of those hotels. They run right along these canals. We'll go and book a room. With a view. It will suit admirably. Grazie tanto, signor. Grazie. Prego, prego. Not exactly the Ritz, is it? They're not taking assassins at the Ritz this year, dear boy. Well, what now, Charles? Now we wait. It's a superb piece of equipment. Where did you get it, Charles? Oh, a friend of a friend of a friend, dear boy. And it can't be traced, even if the police do manage to recover it from the canal. Hmm? What more could one ask? Through this, he'll look as if he was three feet away. I still don't see why I should be the one to... Oh, do stop arguing, dear boy. It's all arranged. Charles, surely... We're equal partners, Edward. I kill, you kill. And then we know that we can trust each other. <clears throat> still no, um... sign of him yet? No, not yet. Oh, but don't count on him not turning up. Jason King will arrive sooner or later. And when he does... I mean, <clears throat> some other method. The man like Jason King, there's no room for alternatives. Either you stop him or he stops you. Well, it's just that you never see Mark Cain with one of these. It's all hand to hand with him. Yes, I've seen some of your hand to hand fighting, dear boy. With King, you'd last about ten seconds, and he'd use five of those taking his coat off. You know, Charles, you've changed. There was a time when you'd have, you'd have been sick at the thought of this. That was before we came up in the world, Edward. Or we filled our pockets with gold and platinum and diamonds and killed to keep them. Uh huh. What is it? It's King. He's here, dear boy. He's here. He's in a launch. It doesn't matter what he's in, Edward. It just requires a gentle squeeze of the trigger. But, Charles... <sighs> he's getting closer. Get ready, dear boy. But, Charles, I... I, I, I seem to have lost him. What? Oh, yes, I... I, I can see him now. If you were to make a mess of this, dear boy, I, I don't think I could ever forgive you. Take him just below the Rialto Bridge.
gentle squeeze, dear boy. Trigger, he sat down. Again, fire again. I can't, Charles. I can't. He might not have heard the shot. He didn't have to hear it, dear boy. When a high velocity bullet passes a foot over your head, you feel it. He knows we're here now. He knows what we plan to do. It was a perfect chance. Perfect. I'm sorry, Charles. I don't believe in anything of the sort. Charles, look, couldn't we go to South America? No. I'll have to think of another plan. Haven't you got any ideas? Huh. Well, what about a, a, a bomb in his car? Crude, vulgar, and ineffective. No. What is there that gives us the advantage? Of course. His next novel. Charles, we don't know for certain what... I think that we can safely assume that he's here doing research. Now, if only... Only what, Charles? There is a way of getting rid of him. I need a girl. A beautiful, sensual girl. Charles, this is hardly the time for... A girl who would appeal to King. Huh? Oh. That's Jason King. In the flesh. With a man like that, a girl would have to be careful. And true, but not too careful. It's essential that you get into his room to find what he's working on. And then? Keep him there. He looks to me like a man who makes up his own mind. If you go into King's room this evening, the chances of you getting out before three in the morning are rather remote. I see. And this? Wired for sound. Keep it with you all the time so that we can listen in. If you think I'm... Before you become intimately involved. Your job is to find out what he's working on and keep him occupied for a few hours. No more. I should think that's quite enough. Well, there's no time like the present. I think I'll go and introduce myself to Mr. Jason King. Mirelle picked King up terribly easily. Why shouldn't she? She's the most attractive girl. Yeah, I appreciate that. You don't suppose King knows what we're planning, do you? How could he? Well, after all, uh, he is Mark Kane's creator. And quite impossible, dear boy. Quite impossible. I don't believe you, Jason. It Listen. isn't possible. They're coming back. Mirel, all things are possible, especially in fiction. Ah, they brought him. Where you work, Jason? When I have nothing better to do. It must be terribly difficult to keep thinking of new stories. No, not really. It's like everything else. When you've developed an infallible technique. Thank you. Lovely. And what is your technique, Jason? As a novelist. Good girl. Very simple, really. First, find a place that deserves to be robbed, then work out a plan how to do it. Don't people mind? You'd be surprised. They're usually flattered. Never mind that. Where? And what do you do then? Well, once I find the locale for the robbery, then I find the kind of people who will carry it out. Then I have my pleasure. I find a unique way for Mark Cain to stop them. How marvellous. It's enough shop for one night. Put your glass down. Come over here. Oh, Jason. Mirel, this is not what we're paying you for. Where is he planned the robbery? Oh, Jason. Jason. You and your great ideas. Well, I did expect some self-control. Darling. Darling? I've only been in there two minutes already. It's darling. 
Darling, don't rush me. I really am interested in your work. What kind of robbery have you planned for Vane? Ah, you see? There's all the details in my notebook. You mean the one on the desk? Yes. You know, the fascinating thing about Venice is the way... So many of the city's commercial buildings have been built on the canals. The main entrances in the streets have the latest security devices, but the loading bays in the, on the canals haven't been changed for over 50 years. So anybody in a gondola and an old crowbar could break in. But there'd have to be a reason. How about gold? A million in gold. A million? In gold? But how on earth did you find a place like that? Venice is famous for its gold work. I found a firm of specialists. I checked. Sure enough, they had a loading bay on the canal. No longer used, of course, but quite serviceable. But if the company knew that you were using their name... Hmm. I'd change all that. Jason King, you have a terrible mind. Mm -hmm. What a superb mind. A gigantic intellect. What a pity we have to cut it off in its prime. If it's possible. My dear Edward, you are the eternal pessimist. Charles, when we're dealing with a gigantic intellect, I think I have every right to be. Ah, but we have the advantage. Now, let's see. If there's that much gold involved, we shall need a boat, say, two extra men, and explosives. That'll take, what, uh, say, two hours? Don't forget King's notebook. That's most essential. I thought I might leave that particular detail to you, Edward. Oh, Jason, darling. It sounds as if it shouldn't be too difficult. They seem to be adjourning to the bedroom. Uh, <clears throat> Charles, they might still be there when I, um... Edward, we are dealing with a gentleman. <laughs> that they can read my handwriting. Along the Medici Canal, with its tall gaunt buildings and ornate bridges, to a narrow backwater once used for loading cargo... Don't be so long-winded about it, dear boy. I can hardly read his handwriting as it is. Look for a narrow turning above the bridge. In the shadows of this quiet backwater was the ancient and respected firm of Fenili, goldsmiths to the crowned heads of Europe. According to this, the new workshops are straight through. Excellent, dear boy. What a splendid system this is. Even Jason King will find it exceedingly difficult to explain. An unpublished robbery was not done by him. You've got the explosives? Si, senor. Right. I'll carry them now. Follow me. What was that, Charles? Not to worry, dear boy. There's some boxes fell over. Charles, there is somebody here. Yes, four of us. Do pull yourself together, dear boy. Senor Farrington! There you are. One of the hired help. Be quiet, you fool! It's King! It's got to be King!
King? King? Where are you? Uh, over here, old boy. Temper, temper. I've been expecting you with great anticipation. This is the end, Charles. <laughs> the end! Be quiet, Edward. One of the advantages of writing fiction is you can always change the ending when it suits you. This isn't your trap, old chap. It's mine. I told you, Charles. I told you we should have gone to South America. Get the explosives. But Charles! Get them, dear. Good. Now set the fuse. Here, Charles. Don't argue, dear boy. Do it. And do it now. Charles. I'm not a difficult man, Mr. King. Why not come out and discuss our differences man to man? My dear fellow, you really ought to leave the fiction to me. As you will, as you will. How long is the fuse? 30 seconds. Can't set it off in here, it'll blow us all up. No, we'll be out in time. But not King. The police will think that he came to get the gold. What about Dino and Luigi? <laughs> Goodness, how sad. Charles, you can't. Get moving, dear boy. Otherwise, I'll leave you here as well. <laughs> Hello, Edward. How nice to see you again. Edward! We gotta get out of it! There isn't time. It's a question of priorities. I'm sure you can spare a minute or two. No. No, the, the whole place is going up. I'm sorry. We've got to get outside! Then drop your gun, dear! Come on! Oh, explosives! Take a any second! Is this what's worrying you? Your turn, Capitano! I took the fuse out ages ago. Are you right, Mr. King? Never felt better. On behalf of your hero, Mark Kane, would you like to put these two mad dogs into quarantine? I would be delighted. Not quite up to our standards, Mr. King. Mm, more ways than one. Uh, what do you think of the tie? Oh, I think the tie. Yes, You're the tie is perfect. I'm not quite sure about... Oh, excuse me, old boy. Would you mind? No, no. No, not the hanky. Just treat it gently. Let it flow. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. Yes. Carry on, old boy. I told you, Charles, you couldn't beat Mark Kane. You wouldn't be wrong, would you? We should have gone to South America, as I said! <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> what is it about to choose? I do hate a sad ending. Sad? I think I may have lost two avid readers. <laughs> Hey-ho. <laughs>